All right, so what is interventional radiology? Essentially, interventional radiology is doing minimally invasive surgical procedures with the use of real-time imaging guidance. Now, these procedures include things that are related to the blood vessels, like vascular procedures throughout the entire body, or they can be related to some body type procedures. That means related to specific organs and organ spaces without actually accessing blood vessels. So today, let me give you a quick example of what role interventional radiology plays in the role of surgical management. So let's take a look at this case. This is a CAT scan of a patient who was recently operated on, and this patient actually had surgery down in the pelvis. Now, one thing that you're gonna learn, no matter how big, high risk, or low risk your procedure may be, there's always some risks involved, and there always is the possibility of some unintended consequences. That's why it's very important to go over a thorough consent prior to the procedure, where you explain to the patient the pros and cons of the procedure itself, you present alternative options, and you talk about potential consequences. So now in this CAT scan, the patient has drank oral contrast. Otherwise, there's no contrast given via the IV. So everything that's bright here is actually things that has gone through the stomach and it's in, inside the intestines itself. One thing over here that we notice is that we have a collection here that has some air, and it's also pretty bright. Looks like intestine, very easy to miss, but this actually is outside of the intestine. So that's suspicious for a small perforation. Now that's something that interventional radiology is not able to fix. We're not gonna be sewing intestines. So that was something to consider general surgery for. So after being evaluated by general surgery, the patient was indeed taken to the operating room and there definitely was a small perforation in that portion of the intestine. The entire abdomen was then washed out to prevent any infection because now you have intestinal contents that are leaking into the abdomen and that can cause really bad infection, a peritonitis. So essentially, patient was doing better, but a few days after the patient's second surgery now, after the patient had a full abdominal washout, a CAT scan was ordered because the patient still continued to complain of pain as well as hemodynamic instability. So this was the CAT scan, and if we take a look here, now we see some fluid collections here within the right flank. We see an additional fluid collection here within the left flank. We see an additional fluid collection right here in the mid-abdomen. All these collections have this enhancing rim because now we have oral contrast, which we see in the intestines itself, and we also have some IV contrast because we see it in the aorta. So now we have multiple collections and early abscess formation throughout the abdomen that are sort of sealed off. The body naturally tries to seal off the infection. The only bad thing is that giving IV antibiotics is not going to be enough for this patient. This patient has a high risk of deteriorating and actually even dying because of this. Now, one thing to notice here, you'll see that there's actually a drain. So when the patient was operated on, they decided to leave a drain within the abdomen because they wanted to help drain some of this pus material. So it's better to get all the junk out of the abdomen instead of letting it sit in the abdomen and cause major issues such as this. However, you can see the drain in an abdomen. It's very difficult to place a drain in an accurate location. The drains can move. So now you have a drain right here on the side, but right next to it, we have a pretty sizable collection. So essentially now the patient has two options. Either the patient can go back to the operating room for a third time and the entire abdomen can be washed out, all of these collections can be drained, and potentially more drains can be left in the patient, or we can present another option through interventional radiology. So for this case, interventional radiology was consulted, and basically what we wanted to see is, can we percutaneously, using a CAT scan, go through the skin, through a very small incision in the skin, and leave and drain these collections individually without having to open up the entire abdomen and wash out the entire abdomen. So the plan was to attempt to do a percutaneous drainage of this collection here, as well as this collection down here. And again, that's percutaneous. So it's gonna be going straight through the skin to drain the collection, as well as leave a small tube, a small plastic straw essentially, that has a way for pus to continuously drain out of the abdomen so we get it out of the body instead of keeping it in. 
So after a discussion with the surgical team, as well as the patient, the decision was made to do a percutaneous drainage. So again, what that means is that going through the skin to go into the collection, drain it, as well as leave a straw that stays in place. It's a temporary straw, and that allows continuous drainage of pus until this entire pocket begins to close. So as you'll see here, a needle is put in through the skin, down into the, into the collection, and we're careful to avoid these loops of bowel here. The way that we do that is because everything we're doing is under the guidance of CAT scan, so we're using imaging guidance to get into this collection. Through this needle, we loop a wire into this collection. As you can see, it's hitting the wall of the collection and looping on itself. And then over this wire, we put a straw. This is the catheter that is actually gonna be sitting inside this collection. And here you will see the straw forming a loop. And that loop continues to let pus and debris drain into it, come out external to the patient. And this loop also prevents this catheter from being dislodged because as this starts to move, as you're moving, as you're breathing, as things are happening while you're standing, sitting, this catheter is mobile within this collection, but this loop prevents the catheter from getting dislodged. So that was one of the collections that was drained. And right here, we have a similar plan on the other side. Right here is that collection. Again, the plan is gonna to be to come in through the skin. Right here, coming in through the skin. Wire gets put into this collection, looping into the collection. Over that wire, a thicker straw-like plastic catheter, which is gonna be looping right there into the collection itself. And now we have a way for pus to actually be able to exit the body. So what happens next? Patient continued IV antibiotics. This tube continued to drain pus-like material for a few days. Patient started to feel much better when the drainage stopped. I'm simplifying here, but when the drainage stopped, this tube was removed. This area was bandaged up and closed up. If it was sutured in, sutures were removed. And patient overall did much better. So when you have these type of collections here, IV antibiotics alone are not gonna do the trick. You really need to drain these collections internally. And you have two options, depending on what the collections look like. This patient could have gone to the operating room for a third time, or this could have been done through the skin, going to the operating room. Patient requires general anesthesia. Going through the skin, we can give some sedation or some medicines through the IV to help with pain control, help with anxiety, but the patient does not need general anesthesia. These procedures are much shorter. The risk is a lot more minimal compared to an open procedure. So because of that, patient opted for this. The team, primary team agreed. We also agreed, decided that it was safe enough to do this and we did it. And at the end of the day, patient got better and that's all what it's all about at the end of the day. So that's a brief look into a fairly straightforward bread and butter situation of how interventional radiology every single day makes a difference in patient management. So if you like this content, there's more on this channel on interventional radiology, internal medicine, diagnostic radiology. Don't forget to like and subscribe and until next time.